Astro 2.0 is out and the hype is real. Now, if this isn't too contradictory for you, it's both iterative and revolutionary. It's iterative in the sense that for almost everyone with an existing Astro site, you can upgrade to 2.0 without any trouble. But it's revolutionary in that it introduces at least three big updates that can change how you build your sites. In this short video, I'll walk you through the three biggest improvements in Astro 2.0, content collections, hybrid rendering, and enhanced error messages. And if you stick around to the end, we'll walk through all major breaking changes. We're gonna move fast, you ready? All right, let's jump in. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. In an effort to keep this overview short, let's jump right in with three new improvements in 2.0, content collections, hybrid rendering, and enhanced error messages. All right, let's start with content collections. In short, content collections is a type safe way to process local markdown or MDX files with schema validation that both enhances the developer experience and produces less error prone sites. Normally, if you mistype an author's name in a markdown file, you'll never know unless you happen to see it in your editor. Additionally, you might create extra routes accidentally or be linking to a 404 page because of a misspelling. And often, if you mistype some data in your markdown front matter, you're confronted with a cryptic error message. What are you supposed to do with this? But content collections changes both of these frustrations into wins. With everything set up, Astro checks every entry in your defined collection against its schema to ensure it meets whatever criteria you set for it. If it passes, you can trust your front matter is correct. And if it fails, you get actual error messages you can understand. Well, how does it work? Well, first you add Markdown or MDX blog posts to a content folder grouped by their type. Then, create a config file that defines each collection front matter schema using the validation library Zod, and export all collections in a collections object. To access your posts, open any Astro route and use the get collection method to await all posts from your collection, or use the get entry by slug to get a specific post. You can even filter the posts to match any front matter criteria like all non-feature posts that also aren't drafts. With the return data, map to output the result with type safety and IntelliSense. To create dynamic routes for the post, use the same git collection method inside your exported git static path function you're used to in Astro, returning the entry as a prop. In addition to the slug and front matter data we've already seen, each post also returns a few other things, including a render method that, when awaited, provides the full rendered content as an Astro component. Output it on the page, and you've got all your posts dynamically created. Now, if you're interested in taking a closer look, I just posted a long video on content collections, which you can find in the description. At the end of the video, I even show you how to take an existing Astro project and upgrade it to 2.0 using content collections. All right, on to big feature number two, hybrid rendering. Since 1.0, Astro has supported both SSG, static site generation, and SSR, server-side rendering. The only problem is you had to choose between which option to use for your entire site. Go with static generation and you've got lightning fast pre-built HTML pages. But if you ever change any data for any page on your site, you've got to do an entire static site rebuild and deploy the whole thing again. Go with SSR and you can generate on-demand HTML that responds to data changes, but you miss the speed benefits of a pre-rendered HTML page for landing pages and other pages on your site that rarely change their content. So which do you choose for your entire site? Well, with 2.0, you don't have to make a choice. You can mix it up with hybrid rendering. For each page on your site, choose which fits your needs best for that particular route. Sound complicated? Well, maybe for the Astro Core team, but they've made it embarrassingly simple for the dev experience. First, enable server-side rendering for your site with any of the available hosting adapters. This defaults your build to SSR. Then, for any route that should be statically rendered, that is pre-rendered, add a single export value at the top of the page. Export const pre-render equals true. On build, Astro analyzes each route and either outputs a pre-rendered static page or the correct server code required for dynamic on-request server-side rendering. Here I'm going to use a graphic found in the latest and excellent Astro blog post that does a deep dive into hybrid rendering. They accomplish this dual output by analyzing source code on each page categorizing each one as either pre-rendered, that is static, or server-side rendered. For the static pages, they output pure HTML. For the server-side rendered pages, they output server code to dynamically build the pages on request. 
Now this post gives a ton of great ideas and use cases like server-side rendering your store pages but statically rendering your homepage, adding an API route to your static site, and more. But again, I'll link to the post in the description because I think it does a great job walking through both the how and the why of hybrid rendering. All right, the third large improvement may seem like a small one, but it's huge in practice, a revamped error experience. As I've already showed you with the Content Collections API, you get more precise errors. Perhaps the best way to show you the improvement is to show you a before and an after shot. In the first, you can't tell what's happening or what needs to be changed. It's up to you to track it down. In Astro 2.0, however, you not only get a better designed experience with light and dark mode, but you also get access to quick links, either to the file in question or to the actual documentation. And speaking of documentation, there's a new error reference section in the docs that lists each type of error, shows what went wrong, and gives specific instructions for solving the problem. A huge dev improvement from 1.0. All right, now for the breaking changes. I'll be fairly quick here because the TLDR is, like I said, you shouldn't have any issues. There's a full list of breaking changes in the doc, but let me highlight just a few. First, with official support for Node 14 ending in a couple of months here, they've just decided to drop it right now, so there's no more support for Node 14. Second, if your existing project included a content directory directly inside of the SRC folder, that's a directory that's now reserved for the Content Collections API. You can, of course, still have a page directory for content, but you can't have a content directory as a direct child of the SRC folder unless it's being used with the new Content Collections API. Third, on build, Astro 2 now ships a underscore Astro directory for all your bundled assets like your CSS and JS files. So if your current site depends on those bundled assets being in a specific location for some reason, you may want to look into the new build.assets configuration option and just customize it to fit your needs. Finally, Astro 2 removes several long since deprecated APIs. Before you update your project, see if you're using any of these old APIs like Astro Flavored Markdown, Astro.Resolve, or Fetch Content, or Canonical URL. Two of these were deprecated before the 1.0 launch and two at the 1.0 launch, so they've been marked for deprecation for at least six months at this point, and each has a simple upgrade solution available in the upgrade docs that, again, I will link below. Well, that, that was a lot in a short time, but I hope it was a great help, a great update by the Astro team, and I'm continually excited by the direction of this project. Hey, well, thank you so much for watching. If I got anything wrong, or if you enjoyed this video, or if you just want to say hi, give the video a like first, and then drop a comment below. All right, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.